Drew Liske here with a review of the Beretta 694. The Beretta 694 was launched by Beretta in September of 2019, officially hit retail shelves here in the US in 2020. The 694 replaces the 692 Sporting, which is prone to many mechanical issues, primarily that with the ejectors. This gun is an entirely new take on a competition sporting clays over and under, and features a lot of modern elements not found in other shotguns. Let's start off with what the Beretta 694 comes with. Here we have a toolbox with trigger adjustment tool, three spare extended choke tubes, five in total, a spare recoil pad for additional length of pull, a stock wrench, choke key, and some oil. The 694 is truly Beretta's own mid-level competition clays gun. By mid-level, that means, you know, in between the three to $5,000 price point. Uh, Beretta has the 686, 687, and 690 series guns in that more entry-level price point sub 2000 or so. And then they have the DT-10 and SO5 series guns, which push the $10,000 price point. The 694 sits almost halfway between the two, between four and $5,000. Moving on to the specifications of the gun, we'll start with the barrel. The 694 features Beretta's Stelium Plus barrels. This technology is only found in the 694 and the DT-10 Plus series shotguns. It is very nice that they incorporated their highest end barrel technology in the 694, something that the 692 did not have. In terms of the barrel, we have a tapered 10 to 8 millimeter top rib, which is ventilated. We have a mid rib, which is also ventilated and can accommodate the B-Fast weight system. Moving towards the end of the barrel, we have a white Bradley style front sight and the Optima HP extended competition choke tubes. As mentioned earlier, the gun comes with five standard and they're all marked by the constrictions with a color spectrum lining. The forend on the 694 has been changed from the 692. Most notably, the forend iron is steel as opposed to alloy. This adds durability to the forend as well as weight, which is gonna reduce recoil on this gun. As we take the forend off, we're going to notice that there are two connection points where the forend iron latches onto the barrel. This rearmost hook has the interchangeable latch, which a gunsmith can change. The purpose of this is to allow the open te opening tension of the gun to be more consistent and for a longer period of time. Underneath the forearm, the barrel features spots where adjustable weights can be installed to adjust the balance of the gun. The Beretta 694 has a brand new ejector system, which is going to fix all the ejection failure issues that the 692 had. The gun has a slim action neck with greater visibility around the receiver. It is not shaped into a V in this region like most guns. It is kind of weird and untraditional, but makes its function. The action is a different shape than the 692. The action features raised side panels with a sporty blue line curving upwards from the 694 logo. The raised side panels add weight and gives a unique modern look to the gun. It is quite clean looking and appealing. From my experience, the, the B-Fast model, which comes with the adjustable cone, has tended to have better wood than the non-adjustable model. Whether that's Breda's intentions or not, I'm not completely sure. The stock on the 694 is what Beretta calls their two and a half grade. It's kind of a generic average style stock uh, with a oil finish that kind of has a low luster. It's not super shiny. The stock on the 694 was redesigned in comparison to previous models. It features a larger grip and a larger grip radius. In addition, you're going to see on the 694 a very new and unique way of designing the wood where it meets the receiver. We have a scallop of some type at the top of the wood, which is going to enhance your field of view looking down the sight plane of the shotgun. You also notice here on the, the side of the stock that we don't have the V that you typically see on a competition over and under. We have the, kind of the bottom portion of the V, but the top is beveled and smoothed. Now that we've gone over the technical features of the gun, let's go take it on the range for a little bit of shooting time.
Just finished putting some rounds through the 694. One of the first things that I noticed is the way that the checkering on the forearm feels. It definitely has a lot more checkering and coverage of checkering on the forearm uh, than some of the other guns I've handled. It does feel very nice in your hands. You know, that checkering is nice and smooth. It's got a, a good level of rigidity. It just feels like it's part of your front hand. Secondly, I shoot left-handed and I noticed that the palm swell on the, the 694 is quite big. And in this case, this is a right-handed gun. So it's kind of uncomfortable for me as a left-handed shooter shooting the right-handed 694. So if you are a left-handed shooter, I would definitely recommend getting the 694 in the left-handed configuration. That way you don't have to battle with uh, the palm swell uh, being kind of cutting into the side of your palm on the opposite side of your hand. This particular 694 with 32 inch barrels weighed in at eight pounds, four ounces without any of the weight systems installed. Uh, prior to coming and shooting, I did test the balance of the gun and without any of the weights, it did balance well forward of the hinge pin. Uh, so prior to coming out here to shoot, I did install 80 grams of the stock weights into the, the stock assembly and it now balances right on the hinge pin. So I would recommend uh, prior to picking one up and taking it out to go shoot, uh, that you check the weight of the gun and balance with the weights accordingly. Pull! Pull! The only negative that I've experienced with the 692 is that the screw that holds the trigger blade tends to loosen up on itself. I would definitely make sure that you're checking that screw, make sure that it's tight, and if it does loosen up, be sure to apply a little bit of Loctite to ensure that it is always secure. The last thing that you want is for your trigger blade to fall off when you're in the middle of a competition round. So one common question that I get is, is the 694 better than the 692? It did replace the 692, so did Breda do a better job? In my opinion, the answer is definitely yes. Uh, the 694 has much better ergonomics, both with the stock and the forend. It definitely feels and points more lively in your hands. In addition, uh, the 694 has a new top lever, which opens and closes and feels much better on your hands. It also looks a lot better than the rubbery black top lever on the 692. Hey everyone, if you enjoy our content and want to see more videos like this, please do us a huge favor and hit the like and subscribe buttons below.